You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Portland firefighters, they're getting a they're getting some new safety equipment. Not what I was expecting, but we got to read this one. Maybe other fire departments already have this piece of safety equipment, but it's the first time I've seen seen this and maybe it's even if it's just something new to Portland, I think it deserves a read. Portland firefighters are getting bulletproof vests as the risks increase. Risks of what? What's going on in Portland that requires bulletproof vests? Ah, uh, yes, the gun violence. Mm, yeah. So it's gotten that bad. All right. We, we, know, we know that you're fighting fires and you're fighting crime over here. But you guys need some of their equipment because this stuff is going to crisscross. I mean, we're going to have an overlap here. Th- that is something, this is something that I have not thought of. And, and there's, there's one instance uh, in this article that I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes total sense. And, and we'll read about it. Okay. And, and so it doesn't seem as far-fetched. Why would you need a bulletproof? Well, because you might get shot when you're out there on a job site lighting a fire. That could happen. We're going to get into it. Before we do, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies. And I'm, why wouldn't I read a story about firefighters getting bulletproof vests because they might get shot? It's news for reasonable people. All right? All right, let's do this. Portland firefighters will soon have access to bulletproof vests while on the job. The decision was spurred by a changing landscape. I love these terms where it's like um, staffing. uh, What was the term for the police? Uh, Oh, man, I'm forgetting the staffing. How they, 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 you know, lack of police officers and um, staffing irregularities or something or staffing challenges. That's it. In other words, not enough cops. Right. All right. This decision was spurred by a changing landscape and more calls that increased the possibility of firefighters being involved with aggressive patients and bystanders, according to Portland Fire and Rescue spokesperson Terry Foster. I mean, if it's not bad enough that you're going out to a whatever alarm fire and all right, I need you to haul that hose. Okay. And you know what? Further worsening your job, I need you to put on that bulletproof vest. How heavy is the the overall garb that a firefighter wears normally? It's pretty heavy, right? I mean, and then you throw a hose or whatever equipment or axe or whatever you're carting around, bunch of equipment. Ah, yeah. No, go back to the truck. You, you, you need to get on your bulletproof vest. We got a shooter over there. I mean, that's literally what's going to happen at some point in time here, right? And so there have been enough shootings in Portland where this is a thing. I'm totally speculating here, but how else does this come up? And so, you know, fire chiefs are like, you know what? Uh, Yeah, we need some bulletproof vests. Don't want our guys and gals to get killed fighting a fire while being shot by who knows who. Purchasing the vest was discussed by the agency's safety committee and supported by Fire Chief Sarah Boone, Foster said. I mean, it makes sense. It makes total sense. What's crazy is that it makes sense for firefighters to need bulletproof vests. It's just, it's like, what? Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that many shoot. Oh, you got that many shooting shootings in Portland? Mm, okay. Does Chicago already have them? I don't, I mean, they, 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 they probably, I don't know, who knows? You've got uh, Mayor Lightfoot there. Ye- anything could happen. So many specifics still need to be worked out, such as when the vest will be wor- worn, preferably when you're being shot at, how many will be purchased, and when they will be implemented. Well, let's just start with when the vest will be worn. I mean, I guess if you're going into an active shooting, then that's a pretty easy call. But otherwise, do you just have them? Do you just have them on the on the fire truck in the EMT, whatever vehicles are are there? 
Do you take them out on all calls? Are they available all the time? How many do you have? How many will be purchased? Like eight? I don't know. What if you have a big fire and some just crazy persons out there shooting away? How many people do you have on a big fire? Do you have 30? You have 20? Do you, and bulletproof vests are not cheap. I don't know if you've ever looked into purchasing them, but I have. Um, and they're not particularly cheap, especially you get a really good quality one and you're like, wow, that's a lot. Maybe I'll just stay out of the hot zone. How about that? Mm, yeah, maybe I'll stay at home where I've got HBO Max and Showtime and, you know, YouTube and yeah. So <laughs> bulletproof vests. And then when they will be implemented. All right. So when the vests will be worn and when they'll be implemented, when are you going to put them in place? I would say ASAP because with the number of shootings going on, not only in Portland, every, just everywhere. We've, we've just got this elevated, oh, let's just shoot each other mentality right now. I mean, that's literally what we have. Now, you might want to call it something else a little bit, you know, less finger pointing, but that's, that is what is going on. As human beings, we are shooting each other left and right. And it would be preferable if the guys and gals putting out the fires and doing all the other stuff they do, rescuing pets and all the other good stuff, that if they didn't get shot, I, I think that's a good thing. I'm, yep, yeah, I'm down with this. So however, the decision is fully supported by the Firefighters Union, said Isaac McLennan, Vice President of the Portland Firefighters Association. We will always do anything and everything to keep firefighters safe, because that's what keeps people in Portland safe, McLennan said. Is a bulletproof vest standard uh, issue to police officers? And when is it dictated? Do you put it on? Do you carry it on? Do you put it on for certain calls? I need to. I need to. I need to brush up on my bulletproof vest protocol. I really do. I apologize. I should have. I should have been more prepared here, but I'm just not. Um, firefighters have been more concerned for their safety because of responders being attacked or stabbed in Oregon and other parts of the country. So there is precedent for this. So it, 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 I just find it nuts that this is this is what we're coming to. It's just the second part of this podcast is all right, get this. Chicago installing bleeding control kits around the city amid gun violence. And I just can't help myself. But here is the bleeding control units are part of the new Safe Chicago program. The name of the program is literally Safe Chicago. If you need a tourniquet mounted in municipal buildings in a city, if you need that, it's no longer safe. You've already been stabbed. It should be called unsafe Chicago prevention. Or uh, just something along those lines. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's talk about firefighters needing bulletproof vests. All right, McLennan referenced a 2018 fire in Springfield, where a man started shooting at firefighters responding to a house fire. This reminds me of <laughs> one of you sent me uh, an email and it's obviously made an impression. It's like the, the homeless, crazy people screaming at the trees. Just it's like that description of, you know, you, you can envision it. And they are seeing something that isn't there and they are screaming at an inanimate object and but in this case, you've got somebody instead of screaming, they've got a gun and they're shooting people out in front of them. And they happen to be firefighters responding to a house going up in, in flames. Police said authorities believe the man intentionally set the 4 a.m. blaze to ambush emergency responders. Well, I hope that guy is in prison. I hope they put him away for a long, long time. That's all I can say about that. Or if he's a total mental case, put him away for a while, wherever he needs to be. That kind of guy, see, I'm going to intentionally set this fire. And then when they come, I'm going to sneak up on him and shoot him. That, that's, just, that's just, 
That's just brutal. No one was seriously injured because the guy was a terrible shot. But the attack left fire truck windshields riddled with bullet holes. That, that's not good. When your job is fighting a fire, yeah, that's already up there in, you know, it's like deadliest catch where you've got the, you know, what they claim to be the most, you know, dangerous work environment, king crab in the Alaskan waters. When you're fighting a fire, I mean, that's arguably that's right in there, right? And then you have some nut job shooting at you and shooting up your vehicle. How was that call today? That was pretty good, but some just mental case came by and riddled our rig with bullets. Oh, that's that's a tough call. That is a tough call. I mean, fire being shot at, your rig just decimated in windshield. Yeah, can't really can't really see out the windshield. Got to just look through that single hole right there. All right, hold it steady as you're driving. Just nutty, right? The purchase of bulletproof vests doesn't mean firefighters will be sent into more dangerous situations. However, that's good. I believe that's where SWAT enters the picture. Police officers, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Somebody other than the firefighters should be doing that. The less they're going to handle the dangerous situations of things going up in flames and and whatnot there. My ex father in law was a uh, uh, 20, I don't know how many years uh, with the Everett Fire Department here in the state of Washington. Some of the stories he had, and he was old school. He probably retired, I'm guessing, 20 years ago. And so he had been in the fire department 25 or maybe closer to 30 years prior to that. And some of the stories that firefighters have, oh, just. No, thank you. Pass. Every now and then he'd bring up a uh, story at like a dinner and we'd all be like, well, I guess I won't be going back for seconds anymore. And my mom is a registered nurse and she was a registered nurse during the late 60s in London. She's from Australia and she was a registered nurse in London during a lot of the upheaval that happened there and the stories that she would bring. So between my mom and my father-in-law, yeah, there's some, a lot of stories that kind of interrupted one's desire to eat much more. But, you know, good stories. They're crazy. A scenario for their use would be, we talk back to the uh, bulletproof vests. A scenario for their use would be responders going in to rescue an injured person while police work to secure an area with an active shooter. All right. All right. That makes absolute sense to me. In, you know, in a messed up world, because uh, you shouldn't have an active shooter just running, people shouldn't be shooting each other. But we know that's, that's a, uh, to not have that in our society anymore. That's just not a thing. You're gonna have that. And it looks like we're going to have it increasing for a while. Until we can, I don't know, get back to some kind of normal after this whole pandemic thing. I wouldn't have seen if you would have told me that gun violence is going to go through the roof and homicides are going to go through the roof as a result of the pandemic. That would have been a real head scratcher for me. But then when you kind of sit down and look at, all right, if you pull out the rug of social support from underneath a wide swath of, of folks in society, what do you think is going to happen? It's what's going on, right? And then, hey, let's sprinkle in a little bit of defund the police and let's basically, uh, you know, turn the police into from the first responders that we so loved and respected for doing their job to these villains that we hate because of doing their job. It's just like the flip flop. It's like a politician doing a flip flop, right? Just like, ah, that's, that's not really what I said. Well, here's video of you saying that. And here's video of you talking about what you believe. And then now you believe something polar opposite. Well, yeah, times change. Crazy, right? The decision to provide first responders with bulletproof vests comes during a year of record breaking violence in Portland. Social struggles. The Portland Police Bureau reported 837 shootings through August. All right, they're on record to break a 1,000. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to – they're not even going to have to make a big 
push. They're not going to have to, they're not going to have to sprint that last 100 meters. I think they're going to jog into the end of the year with way over a 1000 shootings. Um, and this is the largest year over year increase in the North Precinct where 383 shootings were reported by August 31st, a more than 100% increase from the same period in 2020. However, acquiring bulletproof vests has been discussed for a while, McLennan said. This is just another tool to keep firefighters safe, he said. Yeah, but it's a tool that you don't normally see firefighters running around with, right? I mean, you just have this image of you got the hat, you got the hard hat, keeps the water up, you know, just all that stuff. And you've got the slicker and You've got the big, huge boots and everything's really heavy. And uh, maybe you got the suspenders. I don't know. Probably a lot of other safety stuff that I don't know because my firefighter safety uh, equipment is, is minimal. But bulletproof vest, not, not on that list and not something I would think of. Um, but it's just another tool to keep the firefighters safe because it's a reality in 2021 that they might get shot by some nut job. Yeah, that's where we're at. Mm. That's just crazy, right? Well, Portland firefighters, I'm glad you're getting some bulletproof vests. I hope you don't have to use them. I hope you don't have to crack them out. But you probably will. And when that time comes, you've got them. You've got them. All right, let's move on. Moving on here. We're going to move on to <laughs> Chicago installing bleeding control kits around the city amid gun violence. I mean, this, this is sad, right? I mean, this is sad. When, when you, it's like, what's that? What's that on that building? Is that a, is that an emergency alarm? Nah, it's, it's just like this oversized tourniquet kit for when people either get stabbed or shot at close range. That way they don't bleed out on the streets. Well, why would you need that? Well, because you got a lot of people getting shot and stabbed. Not good. Chicago has been installing bleeding control kits across the city under the new Safe Chicago program amid an increase in gun violence. Last weekend, I'm going off memory here, last weekend in Chicago, 56 shootings seven of them murders, I believe. I believe 49 people just got injured. They just got winged. Um, it's horrible, horrible. Just uh, the city will install 426 bleeding control kits in 269 Chicago buildings, meaning some buildings are going to get multiple. So they just know, all right, Propensity to become shot and or stabbed at this building is higher than average. Therefore, we're going to give them two. Maybe we give them three if it's known to be really bad. And we're going to put these uh, bleeding control kits in City Hall and the Chicago Public Library locations. <sighs> oh, so many different directions you can go there. Are you going to go to get a book? Are you going to check out a book? Nope. I'm going to get a tourniquet. Each kit can treat up to eight victims. Every kit comes equipped with a tourniquet, gauze, shears, gloves, and an instructional an instruction manual on how to best use it in instances of life-threatening bleeding emergencies that can result from falls. All right, I got that. Penetrating injuries, such as stabbings, gunshot wounds, and more. It's just so wildly clear that this is you know, this is a result of just straight up violence, including gun violence that's going on that has really exploded during the pandemic. Life threatening bleeding emergencies, they don't want people to bleed out. This has become a reality that has to be addressed with these kits. And I've looked at the photos. They're kind of Im imagine a uh, like one of those things, it's an emergency, you pull it and the fire alarm goes off. One of those things with uh, maybe a fire extinguisher in it. Um, it's it's kind of like a, a briefcase on a wall kind of deal filled with this stuff. 
And I wrote down the contents. I looked at a photo up close. It's got like a seven inch tourniquet, um, a couple of those, some dressing, a bunch of dressing, two big gauze pads, um, two pairs of gloves, kind of the, the doctor gloves. Um, it's got a survival blanket because if somebody loses enough blood, they're going to freeze. It's got some scissors. You've got a pen, a marking pen. First aid, when you start to crack out the pen, mm, it's not good. And an instruction manual. All right. So as that person is bleeding out, you'll have time to read the manual. No, probably not. But you still got to put it in there, right? I mean, this is it's just horrible. Announced earlier this month to coincide with National Preparedness Month, the program was launched by the Office of Emergency Management Communications and the Federal Emergency Management and FEMA in partnership with the Chicago Fire Department, Chicago Police Department, and Assets and Information Services. They're going to install these all over the city. Okay. However, it has received renewed attention addressing gun violence following the release Monday's updated crime stats from the Chicago Police Department. As of Monday, Chicago has reported, whew, are you ready for this number? These, these are actual people that have been shot. So, and to me, it's just like, it's, it's not just a stat that some goofball real estate guy reads on, on a video that gets put on YouTube. These are people. So as of Monday, Chicago has reported 2,688 shootings in nine months. Call it 2,700. Let's round up. 2,700 shootings. And that's an 11% increase from this time last year. So last year, they were already pretty close to this number. And as well as we've got 602 homicides marking a 4% increase. So that one has only gone up a little bit, but not a ton. But 602 homicides. Imagine that. Imagine a big, decent-sized church filled with people representing those that have been killed. Now, in order to get the 2,688 shootings, you'd have to have a decent-sized auditorium to fill those seats representing people who've been shot. I go to a lot of concerts where you've got like less than 1500 people. So getting, you know, 2700 people, that's a big show. A lot of folks, not good that have been shot. We're living in different times, said uh, Executive Director Rich Gudici, told NBC Chicago, and we're doing our best to adapt to the environment that we're living in. Absolutely mind blowing, right? But it kind of makes sense. If you've got shootings, if you've got 2,700 shootings already this year, and we're in, I'm recording this for you on October the 1st, you've already got 2,700 shootings. Let's extrapolate that. So a quarter more. So do you have another 500 left? Are you going to go 32, 3,300? shootings in a year? I don't know. Do they increase during the holidays or do they decrease? My uh, prediction of crime statistics is uh, it, it's not great. It's not, it's not good at all. But uh, what I do know is that when you need a bleeding control kit around your city, mm, it's just not good. And the safe Chicago part, again, if you need a bleeding control kit, It means you've already experienced violence, right? I mean, just straight up. So that's where they're at. That's where Chicago is at. Uh, I could see this being a thing in uh, Portland. Portland's got, you know, they're north of town. It is not looking good. They've got not numbers like this because they've got such a smaller population. But man, um, some of the the, the stuff just going on is, to me, it's it's mind-blowing. But then again, it's been ongoing for quite a while. And maybe we're just kind of getting to that point where we're like, all right, we know that's been there. We know this has been bad. But I think there's more eyeballs on it since the whole pandemic thing and since these numbers have gone up because public safety is a big deal. And in a lot of the elections going on right now, the big thing is here in Seattle and in other West Coast cities, and maybe part of the reason you're tuning in if you're not from this area, is the whole homelessness thing or unhoused. 
and then you got public safety, and then you've got, you know, fiscal responsibility and a whole bunch of other things. But homelessness and gun violence are two of the big driving factors that I think a lot of people are, are, you know, constituents, voters are saying, yeah, my parks aren't safe. I can't take my kids there. And I don't want to leave my house at night because I don't want to get shot, nor do I want my kids to get shot. And Portland's firefighters, they don't want to get shot. They're going to gear up with some safety vests. But in Chicago, in case you do get shot, don't worry. Tourniquet, all that good stuff. I mean, if you're going to get shot, having this extra, you know, equipment to maybe save your life, extra first aid uh, supplies to save your life. Yeah, makes absolute sense. But just the fact that we're talking about needing that just installed randomly on a wall, 400 and how many of them throughout the city? What we 426 throughout the city of Chicago? That's a lot. That's a lot. But so is 2688 or whatever number of people that have already been shot in nine months in Chicago. Some mind blowing statistics, right? I mean, maybe maybe you're sitting in your hometown and Things are looking pretty good relative to this kind of stuff, right? Maybe so. Or maybe you are in Chicago. Maybe you are in Portland. Maybe you are in Atlanta. You know, any of these places that have had just a real rise in in gun violence and, and everything else. Seattle. I mean, I'm seeing it on the daily now. News stories that we didn't used to see. Except every every now and then, it'd be like, uh, you know, a random weekend of violence. And now it's like every single weekend, something happens. People are out drinking. It's closing time. Used to be closing time meant people trying to figure out who they're going to hook up with and, you know, maybe spend a little more quality time the rest of that evening. But now it's now it seems like it's who you're going to fight with and then whether or not that fight will degenerate into you know, somebody being shot at or shot or wild. It's just, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, what do you say? I mean, yep, need to make some changes. So next time you go to submit that vote for your local politician, keep all this in mind. I know you will. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, that's it for me on this one. I think I've beaten the, uh, firefighters getting bulletproof vests and city of Chicago getting uh, their safety kits, their bleeding control kits. You get the idea now. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for supporting Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I'll catch up with you soon. Till then, seriously, stay safe. This stuff. Huh. We'll talk soon. Bye. to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.